If you're willing to buy one of Holy Land wireless video transmitters, the new Mars 300 Pro is the best system your money can buy. What's going on everyone, Oma here, and in this video guys, we'll test and review the new Mars 300 Pro from Holy Land. Wireless video transmitters add a great value to your production workflow. This unit was sent to me by Hollyland to test on the channel, and if you are a regular subscriber, you already know that all my reviews are fully independent. If I explain the flow, we'll share it with you right away. As I said, in my opinion, it's the best Hollyland system you can buy among the previous Mars 300 and Mars 400 models. I reviewed both of them here on the channel, and I can tell this is the best model so far. And the transmission range is outstanding. Technically, I reached to a very long distance, four times more than expected, and we'll discuss this later in the video. Hollyland makes two versions of Mars 300 Pro, standard and enhanced. The one I'm testing today is the standard version. Both units have built-in antennas, while the enhanced version is anti-collision, shockproof, and also got external antennas on the transmitter only, promising a longer transmission range in some situations. Now, this guy, the standard version, has built-in antennas, lightweight, and transmit Wi-Fi signal to smartphone and tablets, and can be powered by any USB-C power source like portable power banks. So if you run out of batteries, the USB-C power feature will save your back. Mars 300 Pro accepts 4K, like all other Hollyland transmission systems, and the output will be 1080 resolution, like all of them as well. Built-in antennas are really a blessing. Now, you don't need any more to screw the antennas in and detach them when you finish, like we used to do with the previous generation. This is a really good feature, and I'm really happy to see it in Hollyland. Now on gimbals, it's much easier with Mars 300 Pro. The balance is much smoother if you choose to put the unit on the top of the camera, and you're not gonna waste time balancing the extended antennas, like on Mars 300 and 400 for example. However, some of you guys like to use a long HDMI cable and fix the transmitter on the gimbal arm. Both methods work fine, choose whatever you're comfortable with. Speaking of gimbals, as I mentioned, the 300 Pro model is lighter than the previous generations, Mars 300 and 400. That's an additional credit for gimbal users. So the transmitter weighs 136 grams, 4.8 ounces and the receiver is 128 grams, 4.5 ounces. The build quality on the other hand is good so far. Unlike the previous models, the upper part is made of plastic, and the rest of the body is aluminum. Good quality and less weight. Now we're testing transmission range outdoors in line of sight. Mars 300 Pro is rated for 400 feet, 120 meters transmission range on HDMI, and 300 feet, 100 meters on Wi-Fi app, now, I'm gonna start walking from this point and to check how far I can get. Mars 300 Pro transmission range is fantastic. Guys, I reached 440 meters in line of sight on HDMI. That's 1440 feet. What? 440 meters, 1440 feet in line of sight. That's insane. And it's doing a very good job on Wi Fi. The signal maintained up to 120 meters, 400 feet in line of sight. Now, when we have obstacles in between, like bushes or trees, on HDMI, the transmission range survived to about 130 meters, 420 feet. And that's quite more what the system is rated for, while on Wi-Fi, we'll make it to a bit shorter distance between obstacles. Most wireless transmission systems do not survive for a long distance between concrete walls. Now, we'll keep the camera filming a video in my living room and leave my apartment. We're still surviving. Mars 300 Pro can make it for about 40 meters, 130 feet between concrete walls. Not bad. Here on the channel, I tested many wireless video transmitters and I'm almost getting the same result with all of them. On this channel, guys, we make cameras, lenses, and filmmaking gear reviews. If you are a regular subscriber, thank you for sticking out, and if you are new here, consider subscribing for more camera gear reviews. On both the transmitter and receiver side, we have LED screen and controller wheel to pick up or change the transmission channel, check the signal, battery life, and turn the fan on or off. 
Master 300 Pro is powered by USB-C or Sony MPF battery. I highly recommend using the smallest 550 battery model on the transmitter. Keep it small and lightweight. This is how it looks like if you use a large battery. <laughs> like imagine this is all on top of your camera. Why loading heavy weight on top of your camera? And with the receiver, use whatever battery size you like. It doesn't really matter. In the transmitter, we find HDMI input source from the camera and another HDMI loop out if you wish to use an external monitor with the camera. Whereas the receiver has two HDMI output source for two monitors. Beside the video, Marfa 300 Pro also supports audio on both HDMI and Wi-Fi. Now on Marsa 300 Pro, we have two mounting options, a quarter inch mount at the bottom of each unit, and an additional mount that can be fixed on the front side, which make any of the transmitter or the receiver mounted horizontally, instead of being vertically. You get versatile options. Connecting to Wi-Fi app is quite easy. Turn on the transmitter, and connect your phone or tablet to Holyland Wi-Fi. Now in the app, you can record and take images and get them saved in your mobile phone. You also have the option to draw and make notes on the photo if you like to discuss something with your team. It's a handy feature, I might need it one day. Alright, here in the app, we find several advanced monitor settings like waveform, histogram, focus assist, zebra, frame zone, magnifier tool where you can select a point and zoom in, along with false color view and monochrome colors. In papers, Marsa 300 Pro has 0.08 second latency delay. And to be honest, I made several tests with different HDMI cables and two budget monitors. And the results are different depending on what monitor and HDMI cable I use. So on HDMI, the shortest latency delay I reached was about 120 to 130 milliseconds. Some HDMI cables I use made it 200 milliseconds while the shortest latency delay on Wi-Fi was 100 milliseconds. So because I got 100 milliseconds latency delay on Wi-Fi, I guess if I use a high quality monitor like Atomos, I might get the same result or maybe shorter. All right, let's count how much latency delay we have in frames. First on Wi-Fi. Now some of the bus wheels shows on the camera. And this is one, two, three. And now it's showing on the tablet. That's just three frames. And on HDMI, it's one, two, three, four. Four frames delay on HDMI. Now when using HDMI and Wi-Fi at the same time, we get about 40 milliseconds extra delay to the previous records. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope this video helped in making your decision. Since you stick to the end of the video, you must have probably enjoyed it and find it helpful. Thumbs up and bump the subscribe button bump the subscribe button for more good content like this. This was Oma and see you in another one. Mm -hmm.